Good morning, everybody. It's great to be with you again this morning. Hope you're having a good start to your day and uh, ready to dig into the Word of God. I'm excited to uh, bring it to you this morning. Honored to uh, just be together, learn together, and uh, just thank you so much for those of you that have been joining uh, the past few weeks and just uh, look forward to learning uh, from God's Word together this morning. You can be turning in your Bibles to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17 is where we'll be. We're going to look at the parable of the ten lepers. You probably know that story pretty well. Um, the, we'll call the message, Gratitude is Essential. I believe gratitude is essential. Um, I think during a pandemic like we're in right now, there's lots of things we can complain about, uh, our hearts can get hard-hearted about, but it doesn't take a pandemic to do that, does it? Um, our hearts can get critical and um, impure and hard just by, just by everyday life, uh, whether pandemic or not. Um, you know, we celebrate here in the United States, we, we celebrate Thanksgiving uh, every year in November, but as, as followers of Christ, uh, we should be grateful and uh, a heart of gratitude all throughout the year. So let's talk about that together today, and uh, let's, let's go to God in prayer uh, together. Let's bow. Father, thank you so much for the technology that brings us together this morning. Uh, thank you so much for uh, everyone that's here with me uh, this morning, Father. I just uh, thank you for them. And I pray that this message uh, blesses them. I pray that it, it uh, also challenges all of us um, towards our hearts being soft and pure and grateful. Uh, Father, we, we want to say thank you so much for loving us. Thank you so much for being patient with us. Uh, thank you so much for uh, Jesus. Thank you so much for Scripture. Thank you so much for all the ways you provide for us, Lord. We truly do want to have a heart of gratitude throughout the year. Uh, Father, we thank you for frontline workers. We thank you for doctors and nurses and EMTs. We thank you for truck drivers and pharmacists and uh, cashiers at, the, at the, the big box stores. And we're just so grateful for everyone uh, that is out there risking their safety uh, during a very, very tough time. God, we look to you uh, to clear things up. We look to you to heal uh, the world of this virus. Father, like no other time that I can remember, we need you more than ever. But Father, even when this clears up, Father, please know that we love you and we need you till the very end, God, because we're going to be with you uh, prayerfully in eternity. And that's where we want to be is with you. We love you so much. pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's jump right into the text in Luke 17. I'm going to be reading uh, this from the Christian Standard Bible. Maybe read just slightly different than yours if you're reading the NIV, uh, but probably not a whole lot. Let's, let's pick it up in verse 11. While traveling to Jerusalem, he passed between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten men with leprosy met him. They stood, at a diff, diff, excuse me, they stood at a distance and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he told them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And while they were going, they were cleansed. But one of them, seeing that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice gave glory to God. He fell face down at his feet, thanking him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus said, Were not ten cleansed? Where are are the nine. Didn't any return to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he told him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has saved you. You know, a very, very interesting parable that we have here this morning. Um, it sure seems at first glance, and, and probably we will stay there actually, that nine out of ten Lepers, in our parable this morning, they're, they're ungrateful. Um, 
9 out of 10, 90%. Um, Jesus has cleansed them of their leprosy. And one, a foreigner, a Samaritan, has gone back and said, thank you. Thank you. He, said, he goes back with a loud voice, praising Jesus for what he had done. He was diligent about his gratitude. Are we equally diligent about our gratitude? You know, sometimes I am and sometimes I'm not, truth be told. I assume you're probably a lot like me. You have to work on it. You know, I, I, I know that our Father appreciates being thanked, appreciates our display of gratitude. It's a condition of our heart when we verbalize it. I like my kids to thank me when I do something nice for them. Uh, when someone else does something nice for them, I like them to express gratitude. You know, I, I, for me, I know when my faith is running a little low, when my trust in God is running a little low, when doubt seeps in, I am learning more and more and more that gratitude is the great equalizer. Gratitude, when I stop and push all that stuff out and get alone with God, and just think about how good he's been to me. And whether making a list, and I'll, I'll get to that later, but whether making a list on paper or just reciting it out loud of all the things I'm grateful for, all my problems get so much smaller. My faith gets stronger. My trust in God increases. My doubt gets pushed away. Gratitude, the great equalizer. Gratitude is essential, guys. Uh, I, I want to be thanked. You want to be thanked. We all want to be thanked and appreciated. And our God wants to be the same way. You know, um, King David loved to offer thanks to God. His the, the psalms that he penned are full of thanksgiving and gratitude. Paul, many scriptures on gratitude in the New Testament. But in this parable that we just read together, there's a resounding question that keeps coming to the forefront that Jesus asked of the one leper that returned. Jesus asked him, Where are the nine? Where are they? I'd like to know. Do you know? Where are they? I think we have to ask ourselves, does this question expose us any? Where are we ungrateful to Jesus? Where are the nine? Are we one of the nine? Or are we like the one that's been cleansed? You know, uh, there was a, a children's Bible class in a uh, church years ago. And uh, I guess you could say it was similar to like a, vo um, a vocational Bible school, a vacation Bible school, excuse me. And, um, you know, at the end, kids were... Uh, drawing prizes and awards that were given out. And kids are, you know, in the box, just taking them left and right, all kinds of various types of prizes. And, you know, at the very end, a child pulled his prize out and he said, thank you to the people putting on the event. And uh, he was like the only one of many that said, thank you. And so is the problem with gratitude just a child's problem? No. You and I know that it's not. As adults, we have this problem. As followers of Christ, we have this problem. Well, 
Why is that? Which leads me to my first point. We are a selfish society. We are a selfish society. You know, how do you feel when you're driving down the road and you, al you allow somebody in traffic to get in front of you? Now, maybe this doesn't bother you, but you let them in and they get in and they don't even acknowledge you with a simple wave. They're not grateful, doesn't appear. Uh, what about when you open the door for someone at a, at a store and they don't say a thing? They just barge right on through. They don't seem very grateful, do they? It's not just a childhood problem. It's a mankind problem. And you're going to he hear me keep asking the question this morning, where are the nine? You know, in Luke's gospel that we just read, we're introduced to the ten lepers. They're plagued by the most arguably terrible of conditions. Leprosy. Cut off from society by law. Outcast from their own homes and villages, oftentimes. Uh, uh, left to wander in the wilderness. Sometimes bells around their neck. And when they enter a new village, a new town, wherever they're going, they have to say unclean, unclean as they enter at the first sight of other people. Tough way to live. And all ten recognize Jesus. All ten recognize what he can do for them. They cry out as one for cleansing. Master, have mercy on us. Do you remember that? Do you remember when you were at your lowest and you said, Jesus, have mercy on me? Because apart from mercy... We're helpless. We're without hope. And he shows all ten of the lepers mercy, does he not? He shows you and I mercy. What kind of impact has that had on our lives? What kind of difference is that making? Jesus heals them and sends them back to the priest, a requirement of the law. But only one of the ten manages to go back and say thank you. Where are the nine? Now, maybe, presumably, they have returned to their homes and families. Maybe they're enjoying their children, their spouses. They've not been able to be around them in a long time. They've not been able to hug their family. Maybe in years. We don't know all the individual stories there. Maybe they're sitting around the table for a meal for the first time in a long time. Can't deny them these pleasures, we would be the same way, right? But where's the gratitude first? We enjoy the blessings of God. But do we stop and say thank you? Do we show a heart of gratitude? Are we so busy, ready to move on from the healing that we forget to show gratitude? There's nothing wrong with the actions of the examples I gave you. Hugging family, that's a wonderful thing. Sharing a meal with them, that's a great thing. But let's not forget to show gratitude to God first. You know, um, I 
think it's human nature. I know most people, when things go bad, now not everybody does this, but I think the vast majority of us, when things go bad, what do we tend to ask? We say, why me, right? Why me? Why do I have to be the one? And I bet you the lepers ask that many times. Why me? Why do I have to have this dreaded disease? Why do I have to be banned from my family? Why do I have to be treated like an outcast? Why me? But have you ever noticed when things go well, we don't ask why me? <laughs> we don't do that, do we? Now, maybe, maybe sometimes we do. Maybe sometimes when we're in a really good place, we say, I am so not worthy. But when life is rolling, prayers are being answered, things are going the way we want to, we don't always say, hey, why me? Why am I so healthy? Why am I so well fed? Why do I have this nice car? Why am I so well off? Why am I taking care of during this pandemic and so many others are less fortunate why is God being so good to me why is God continuing to show mercy on me can you relate why do I have nice home why do I have two running cars. You know, I'm in the process of closing on this house in a few weeks, and it's been a great home for me and my family. Nothing extravagant. Well, I guess that depends on who you would talk to, right? Four bedrooms, two and a half baths, corner lot. It's got everything we need. It's even got a sunroom attached. 30 years old. It's not perfect, but I bet people a lot less fortunate would be very grateful for it. The question is, am I grateful for it? And then getting ready to move to Memphis in a few weeks, exciting time, for sure. And God willing, we, we have a home that we're closing on there on June 5th. And in actuality, it's arguably a little nicer. It's a, it's a little bigger. It's got more bedrooms. It's 34 years old, but it's nice. But why me? Because God is good. God gives me blessings that I don't deserve. But we don't say why me when he's treating us really, really well too often, do we? Do we deserve better food than others, nicer car than others, if others even have a car or a home? Um... Listen to this. Over 92% of the world's population don't own a car, but yet we complain about the vehicle we drive. Most Americans are in the top 8% of the world's richest people, no matter what car we drive, but do we express gratitude for that. We see photos of children in Africa bathing in filthy water, polluted water, toxic water oftentimes. And then we go to our sink, turn on the tap, put the glass under, and get a nice, clean, filtered glass of water. 
or we drink about a couple of sips and we throw the rest down the drain. Or we take 20 minute showers. I'm not trying to be legalistic, guys. I'm just saying we have it very, very good, don't we? Are we grateful? Are we one of the nine? Or are we the one? Second point, God desires to be thanked. God desires to be thanked. How do you feel when you do something for someone and they don't say thank you? It doesn't feel really good, does it? can go to a place in our hearts where we're like, well, this is the last time I'll do something for them. They're not thankful this time. I'm not doing that again. You feel snubbed. You feel cheated. You feel disrespected. Or maybe I shouldn't speak for you. Speak for me. But I bet you there's several of you out there that feel the same way. You might even feel angry at that person's lack of gratitude. Maybe resentful. How do we think God feels? God does have feelings. He's not made of stone or wood. He's not indifferent to what's going on in our lives. He's not indifferent to what's going on in our hearts. I don't want to make God sad. I don't want to make God think I don't care. I do sometimes. But I don't want that to be the norm. Does that make sense? When we appreciate what people do for us, we often tell others, don't we? When we get good customer service somewhere, we tell others, don't we? When we get bad customer service, we tell people even more, don't we? That's a fact, actually. Usually good service doesn't get um, reported nearly enough. But bad service? Yeah, people are all over that. Do we tell others what the Lord has done for us? He's done amazing things in our lives, has He not? He has saved us from our sin, which is a miracle, each one of us. The fact that God can change a hardened, critical, prideful, sinful heart like mine is a miracle, and only God can do that. Has He done that with your heart? If He's done that with our hearts, let's tell other people about it. You see, in our parable this morning, the one leper sets the standard. He went out of his way to thank Jesus for his healing. Are we going out of our way to thank Jesus for our healing? You know, the leper that's also Samaritan in our parable we have no clue how long it's been since he kissed his wife, since he hugged his children. We don't know the last time he saw his mother or his father. We don't know the last time that he enjoyed the company of his friends. But one thing we do know he had his priorities straight, at least, at least this day. This day, he thanked Jesus before he went on his way. He had his priorities straight. Do we have our priorities straight as disciples? Before we go on with our day, do we give thanks to Jesus? I like how Luke puts it. He says he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks and he was a Samaritan. 
See, the suggestion there is that the others were Jews. They should have known better. The ones that should have known better are the ones that have gone on without saying thank you. If you're a disciple of Jesus, then we know better. We know better than to go on with our life without saying thank you first. Jewish people enjoyed so much privilege, but yet they're ungrateful. If we're adopted into God's family, God's kingdom family, we have so much to be grateful for. I want to tell you a little story. There was a um, father and a mother whose son was killed in the military. Always a tough situation for sure. And they belong to a um, fairly small church. Not, not teeny teeny, but fairly small church. And they came to him, uh, to the minister one day, and they said, uh, we'd like to give a financial gift to the church in memory of our son who died in battle. And the minister said, that's a wonderful gesture on your part. It truly is. So he asked them, is that okay if I tell the congregation of your plan to give this financial gift in the memory of your deceased son? And they said, sure, that's fine. And so the minister told the church about it. Didn't give a lot of details, obviously, but just generally that they were giving on, on behalf of their deceased son. And on the way home from church that afternoon, another couple was driving home down the highway when the husband said to his wife, why don't we give a gift because of our son? And the wife said, because our son didn't die in conflict, in battle. Our son is still alive. And the husband said, that's exactly my point. Our son is still alive. Our son is still alive. How much more the reason we should give thanks to God. Man. Where are the nine? Okay. Got another point. Last point. Gratefulness shows our need for God. Gratefulness shows our need for God. We truly are dependent on our Father, are we not? We act awfully self-sufficient right now. And we're finding out during this time more than ever how much dependent we are on God. It is God who gives us life, who gives us breath. Without Him, we can truly do nothing. In Colossians chapter 1, I'm just going to read verse 17. Paul tells us, He is before all things, and by Him all things hold together. You see, He is not only our Creator, He is our Sustainer as well. He preserves us in this thing called life. He is sustaining us through this thing called COVID-19. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 4. I will be the same until your old age, and I will bear you up when you turn gray. I have made you, and I will carry you. I will bear and rescue you. We 
we truly do have a lot to be grateful for. Turn in your Bible, please, to Matthew chapter 5. Don't you agree that He's worthy of our gratitude? He's worthy to be praised all the time? Will we, will we be like the one or will we be like the nine? We have a choice. Matthew 5, verse 44. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward will you have? Don't even the tax collectors do the same? You know, if we're really being honest here, God has showered us with grace and mercy. Even in the midst of our ingratitude, oftentimes, He blesses us. Not because we're worthy, because we're certainly not, but because of His great love for us. Even in our ingratitude, he showers us with love and blessings. Wow. Who but God, right? You know, in the story of the lepers this morning, he especially blesses the Samaritan. He especially blesses the Samaritan, the returning worshiper. You see... He not only finds physical healing from leprosy, but spiritual cleansing as well. Luke 17, verse 19. And he told him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has saved you. You see, he got something more. Their healing was not revoked. Their healing was not taken away. But he got spiritual cleansing as well. I've been spiritually cleansed by Jesus. And many of you listening this morning have as well. I need to keep going back. Even though it's been many, many years ago, I need to keep going back and saying thank you. It's why we take communion every week. We get to remember Jesus and show our gratitude. But we don't have to wait till Sunday. We need to do that many times throughout the week. Let's read one more passage together in Romans 5, if you'll turn there. We're wrapping it up here. Thank you for letting me come into your home with the word this morning. My honor to do so. Romans 5. And we'll start in verse 8. But God proves his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we have now been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from wrath? For if, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, then how much more, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life? And not only that, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we now have received his reconciliation. See, we had nothing to offer him. And yet he offered up his son for us. Not when we got it together, which we'll never do. Not when we cleaned it up, because we can't. While we were still sinners, 
God made the choice to demonstrate his love for us through Jesus. We were spiritually bankrupt. Nothing to offer. Self-absorbed. Self-focused. Certainly unthankful. Wouldn't you agree? We were without help. We were helpless and harassed. Unapproachable, unreachable, prideful, stubborn, arrogant. Fill in the blank, right? Every bit as much as those ten lepers, spiritually. And he chose to cleanse us. And he chose to heal us like he did the lepers. Where are the nine? You know, I want to encourage you as we wrap up. If you're not already doing so, keep a gratitude journal. It's a wonderful thing. You can get in these, and I've certainly done it, you get in these places where you're just not grateful for a lot, your heart gets hard, your faith is running low. Just take a few minutes. If you don't have a gratitude journal, which I want to encourage you to get, but just get some paper and a pen. And you know what? You may be in a place that particular day where you can't think of a lot. But there's always, always something to be grateful for. And it may be as simple when you start off with saying, I'm grateful that the sun's out today. I'm grateful I hear the birds chirping today. I'm grateful that I have something in the refrigerator today. I am grateful I have a pillow to sleep on tonight. And what you'll find is you start listing those pretty elementary things that we can take for granted. I appreciate having a shower. I appreciate having shoes to put on my feet. I appreciate having pants and a shirt. It just grows and grows and grows. And the next thing you know, you're thinking... God, for other things, your health, your job, your car, the roof over your head, your phone, your tablet. We have so much here. But then it goes into thinking for your mom and your dad and your siblings and your spouse and your kids and your friends. And, and then you start thanking Jesus for what he's done. And you start thanking God for Jesus. And it just grows and grows and grows. And as it grows and grows and grows, guess what? Your heart gets softer. Your heart gets pure. You're more moldable for God. You're less critical. You're less cynical. You're less prideful. You're more faithful. You're more trusting. Gratitude is essential in our walk with Jesus. So let's go to Jesus daily, several times daily, and say, Thank you. Thank you. I'm grateful. I'm grateful, Jesus. Guys, I know times are tough. And I'm praying for you. And I'm here. If you want to talk, if you want to just talk things through, if you want to pray with somebody, I love praying with folks. Praying with somebody here in uh, about 45, 50 minutes. I love you guys. We're going to get through this together. God is faithful. He loves each one of you. Thank you for letting me bring the word to you. Great to be with you. God bless.